At first, I thought Higuruma was a good guy, but now I'm not so sure. I guess that's due to my own bad judgment. Greetings from the far side of the galaxy. I'm Fury, your host of Mo's here to bring you a story on a Friday. Kinda weird, but I'm not in control of when these chapters come out. I just review them. Why don't you like and subscribe as we dive right on into today's chapter, Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 159, Judgment. The only thing I can dive into comes right at the end, so skip to this timestamp or bear with me for the recap of this chapter. The chapter opens with a rather grim statistic. 99% of trials lead to a guilty verdict in Japan. A rather grim statistic this young man, Mr. Higuruma, has seemed to internalize. Mr. Higuruma is a defender for Oe. He's a young man working for a non-profit organization. He's single and ready to mingle and was found with a bloody knife matching the blood of a recent murder. So he's a little better than the average guy you find on a dating app. Here's the thing, Oe didn't turn in the knife because his place has a rule against calling emergency services because it'll bother the neighbors. Rules that definitely shouldn't be rules aside, Higuruma orders a look into the non-profit shady side while running a background check on all the residents. The task is done by Takagi Shimizu, and honestly, this work is beginning to grate on her. You don't get to pick your cases, the pay is garbage, and the public refuses to make your life easy. Kinda like being a teacher. She complains about it to her friend in a little cafe, and their friend thinks Higuruma may have gotten worse. He once took a DUI case where the workplace forced him to drink and then drive. He couldn't settle nor get probation, and Higuruma was blamed by his own defendant for his failure. Despite this, Hikaruma maintains his faith. The clients don't hate them, they're just against a rock and a hard place. Back in the present, we see the results of the OA case, where the defendant is actually declared not guilty. But life comes around to take a big old crap right on the sunshine and rainbows. The case immediately gets repealed and on top of that, the public began to judge Hikaruma himself when all he did was his job believing that corruption was the only reason Oe wasn't found guilty. Oe thanks Higuruma for at least being the only person to still believe in him, even if the odds of succeeding on appeal are just about zero. Of course, the second trial happens, and of course, Oe is found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Such a result is only natural when the public prosecutors get the benefit of taxpayer money and public opinion. He wonders why his clients always look at him like that when we flip back over to the past. He's always been a good guy who can't stand to be on the sidelines when someone has been wronged. Lady Justice may be blind, but Higuruma will keep his eyes open so at least someone can see the truth. Not a lot of good those fluffy words did him when he's powerless to change the outcome. Nor he was powerless until Kenjaku put his plan into motion. Higuruma slams his gavel down and declares a retrial as an ominous Shikigami appears behind him. Hiromi Higuruma, calling game player and one of the gang's targets. Once again, I'm impressed with Akutami Sensei's writing abilities. Jujutsu Kaisen has always used the flaws of society as major motivators for its characters, and this focus on the justice system is just masterful. In fact, the rigged nature of justice where people's opinions are more important than the actual fact mirrors Yuji's own trial. And Higuruma's character is damn good too. Unlike Hajime, who appears to be the classic evil curse user, Higuruma is a much more complicated character. In fact, he kinda reminds me of Megumi. He's someone who's seen the flaw in the way the world works and decides to put forward their own justice. Don't you kinda wanna see them fight? Two people who believe in a very similar ideology of biased justice? The only issue with that is that Hajime vs Yuji has already been set up, and Hajime and Higuruma are in different colonies, so we can't actually fight them both. Regardless of who fights who, it's probably going to be great, but it's hard to pick the better option. And then there's Higuruma's curse technique. It appears to be activated by banging his gavel, and I imagine it's one of those condition-based abilities, the kind that creates a spirit which lashes out when violating certain conditions. It could be a setup to an interesting battle that doesn't rely on physical performance, so maybe that's a fight Hikari can settle. In conclusion, I rate this chapter an 8 out of 10, a neat little story that explains one of the upcoming antagonists with a great twist at the end. Honestly, Hajime can sod off for all I care, where Hikaruma stands in this household. Before we go, please like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment, and as always, this is your host Fury, signing out.